his police cars right out front because I didn't believe him after that. I was like, this man is not a police officer if he's doing that. You were one ticket away from going to jail. I was one ticket away from going to jail for three months. I walk in and he pulls out a gun and, and points it right at me and he's like, Welcome to the 27th episode of the Set and Bent podcast. This morning, Will was over whispering in the corner of some shenanigans he got up to this weekend. And I think he came home with something brand new mm -hmm. that he wanted to wait until the podcast to tell us so you I know it's going to be good. Also, we've done 27 of these already? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. I did not realize we'd done that many. Yeah, we're crushing. We're Dang. crushing. It's almost every week, man. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, anyway, you just got on. back from Texas. I did. And... Will and I were surprisingly responsible while yeah. you were gone. Also, I got back from Texas for the second to last time. Nice. Ever? I don't, well, at least El Paso. Okay. I don't know if I've ever explained why I'm always leaving on the podcast. <laughs> I don't I, think so. You can. Uh, yeah, well, it's not, doesn't need to be that long of a story. My wife's in the army. Uh, she got stationed in El Paso. So I go down there to visit her like every other month or so. And uh, when I do, you guys usually get up to some very swindly <laughs> business. <laughs> I will say that this is one of the first times you've left that we haven't started any kind of fire whatsoever at all. At all. Also, you guys actually just like worked on a project that was already going and finished it instead of like, usually it's some <laughs> secret new weird pile <laughs> of crap that oh, I don't no. know about. And it's always like, loosely hidden somewhere but like <laughs> it's not very well hidden except for the time i came home and i couldn't even park because it was in the middle of my driveway oh. and that was the worst thing you guys ever did <laughs> not the not that part of it but the thing that you had built was the worst thing i've ever seen it that was, was the, the watercraft of the driveway it had like glue dripping down yeah. it because i like tried to waterproof yeah. it or there was yeah. the time that the 24-hour challenge one like i didn't even know that, that was you, nice i didn't even know that you guys were doing a secret video like normally <laughs> i know that time you had started with some other project that i knew you were doing uh-huh uh -huh. and then i came home and i was just like putting some stuff away in my shop or something that was before this shop was done and I just found pieces of a street bike. And I was like, these don't match any other pieces. But <laughs> there was no street bike to be seen. It was just like a fairing. And I was like, this isn't this isn't part of the Hayabusa. This is not part of anything we've ever used. Nope. So I had to go looking. And it was, of course, just in the sand pit here where the yeah. shop is mm -hmm. now. But And that's the uh, bike that has a four-wheeler welded to the front of it, basically. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, With primitive welding skills, too. <laughs> like, it is very yeah. craft. That's, that's level yeah. one crafting uh, skills, yeah. for sure. It's pretty incredible how far you've come since then, if you think about it. Yeah, I was like, looking at a couple of my designs out in the junkyard over there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Come yeah, way. like I have come a long way. <laughs> the four link suspension on the Chang Lee compared to the 24 hour challenge. I mean, given that was 24 hours, but still. Yeah, that but was usually like, now my projects like work. Also, Will the was first time. on the 24 hour challenge. He had uh, like, he was pretty much just like alone all night. Yeah. Like, had no one there to be like, hey, what do you think about this? Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> after just driving. No input. <laughs> we've never. Maybe we should tell your story and then get into that, but yeah. you should tell the full. Well, we're on a roll right now. Okay, so this is the thing about the we'll twenty-four the hour challenge. News for the, yeah, for later yeah. Later. Okay, so sounds little, good. Little yeah. Uh huh. So let me plug this back in real quick. But we didn't know we were doing the twenty-four hour challenge either when you left <laughs> until so like twenty-four hours before. <laughs> basically, I was like. We knew we wanted to do a 24 hour challenge. Right. So I was like, well, if you find a good deal on anything and you think it's something you can craft in 24 hours, let me know. This was probably even before the word crafting was. Yeah. Oh, popular. yeah. It was. <laughs> and so then. Popular. <laughs> Will was on Marketplace while we were here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here. Yeah. And he was like, this is such a good deal, man. This bike is like, it says it runs and all this stuff. And it's because we like, were looking for an engine. Let me premise. It wasn't a good deal as like a street bike. It was really craft, but yeah, it was a good deal for the motor. Uh, yeah. Translation. It was a terrible, it was a terrible, terrible beat up motorcycle. Ninja 600. Yeah. But, but it was beat up aesthetically, not mechanic. Well, one of the foot pegs was a piece of all thread. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it didn't have like any brakes essentially. Like you had to press them like yeah. a whole bunch of times. And so Will like, shows me this thing, and I'm like, okay, let's do it. Twenty four hour challenge. And then he drew on a napkin, basically the four wheeler, 
just in the front of it. And he's like, and then you sit right here. And I was like, okay, 24 hour challenge. Mm. And then I just handed Will the cash and he went off on the adventure to buy this thing. And that's really where the story starts. Yeah, that was a, that was a long adventure because my Brian just gave me like a taxi service with this man who like hand built this TDI machine. And I didn't know him at all. And he just drove, drove me like, Wait, wait! You skipped Three over hours? something. Who, who did this? Well, you just said my Brian. no. One of his my friends, friend, your friend Brian. Brian. Okay, okay. Yeah. I was just Maybe clarifying. I just said my Brian. You did say your Brian. <laughs> okay, so like, the way I, Brian? the reason I say <laughs> my Brian is Brian's a special kind of man. He uh, just uh, like works on Subarus and knows like all these very interesting people that like craft deals out of thin air. Mm-hmm. And so I can always hit up Brian. So he's a max level swindler is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> and like I was running out of options. I forget how I was even planning to get down there in the first place. But I think I was thinking my buddy Brian was going to bring me down there. And he's like, oh, I can't go, but I have a guy. I can get you out there. <laughs> and he just showed up in this like handmade Volkswagen TDI I, machine. I thought it was a Volvo. It might have been, but it had a TDI know. in it, whatever oh, okay. it was. I, I, I don't know what it was. I just heard Volvo the first time. It Volvo, was Volkswagen, whatever. It's same a thing. brand that's not Subaru showed up with a TDI <laughs> in it and brought me out there. So I'm already kind of like weirded out that I'm just getting taxied out to the middle of nowhere in a TDI machine. By somebody you've machine. never met. By someone I've never met. He ended up being really cool, and we met him again at the Gambler. Um <laughs> you guys actually saw him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we get there, and it's in this little, like, shed area. And this man comes out immediately saying, I just got arrested on this thing and went to jail. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what? Like, I've never had someone say that to me, and I've done a lot of swindly deals. <laughs> and this man just shows up, says, I got arrested in this thing. And it runs. And I'm like, what's going on right now? So it like threw me for a loop. And I kept asking him like, oh, yeah, so it runs. And he's like, yeah, I just got arrested on this thing. And I didn't put two and two together for like three times of asking him that. And uh, his dad finally comes out with a handful of tickets. (laughs) And he's like, this man needs to sell this thing. (laughs) And uh, yeah, I had to drive down about three miles of freshly graded gravel roadway on on bald street bike on bald street bike tires with no front brakes like all i had was (laughs) the rear brake so it was like (laughs) super scary and uh i don't know if you guys have ever driven a street bike on freshly graded gravel but it is horrible even if it works great it's Like, like trying to ride a bicycle on marbles Yes, that is the best way I've ever heard it described. It, because those tires just, they're not good at that. And they sink in and you only have a rear brake. And I was kind of worried too, because like I, that was in the time when I was getting in trouble with the law all the time. And this was in Idaho. <laughs> and this bike was already yeah. wanted. You were one ticket away from going to jail. I was one ticket away from going to jail for three months. <laughs> and I put like the best part of this is that this was also like right at the height of your sleep deprivation. Like we were yeah. trying, to, we were trying to be like, "Well, you really need to sleep." And then in the midst of that, Edwin's like, "You know what we should do? You should stay up for twenty four <laughs> hours. Go buy this street bike that's capable of one hundred and forty mm-hmm. or one hundred and sixty or whatever. Drive it home unsupervised, and then stay up for twenty four hours." I am an instigator. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. If I have, you know, like those people, the one word Instagram bios that like defines them. Instigator. Like entrepreneur. Yeah. Mine's instigator. instigator. And you really instigate. Insta- <laughs> instigate. <laughs> you really instigate uh, my like reckless act. This is why we call you the Swindle Brothers. <laughs> there is because a reason. you're left unsupervised. <laughs> like he Swindly doesn't want happen. me to be reckless, but when I describe a reckless idea to him, he's like, oh wow, that's a really <laughs> yeah. good idea. What man? if we make it more reckless? Yeah. <laughs> so I get this bike, I drive like through this little town and everyone at the gas station I went to was saying like, oh my gosh, can you believe the amount of police out here today? (laughs) 
And I was like, oh, no. And they're like, yeah, they're doing like a routine street cleanup, taking all the hooligans out. Oh, no. And I was like, they were also talking about a winter storm that was told to me before I went on this trip. So... <laughs> So that's uh, that's your decision. But I really thought that I was going to like be able to skip it. But this is on the way to Lewiston or Boise, one of those well, weird they, I mean, towns. Uh, Boise is way to, farther away. It was yeah. probably Lewiston. I had to drive. Yeah, it was Lewiston, and you have to drive up that long pass. Mm -hmm. You know the weird long pass, and you go in and you start smelling those weird. Yes, yeah, that's Lewiston. We, yeah, 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 that place. That Stephen weird place. and I just drove through there to get the snowcat. Yeah. So I was driving up that hill and the snow just instantly like started when I got halfway up the hill and I was like, oh no, That's bro. because, Will, fun fact, Lewiston is the lowest point in Idaho. Yeah, so it was the like nice is down only like there. 400 feet. Yeah, I think those factories keep it a little warmer too. Like it's in this <laughs> giant hole in no, the it's earth. because it's the lowest elevation. It's next to a giant river. It's not the factory. So it's all warm and stuff. And then I'm driving up, hit a snowstorm. It's not that bad. Get a little further. I don't have a gas gauge, so I have to keep like pulling over, opening the tank. Which, if you guys have tried to open the tank on the double cart, yeah, is really hard. And I was worried <laughs> I was going to break my key off in the middle yeah, of that nowhere. Tank is all sorts of janked up. It's really jank. So yeah, I'm just in the middle of nowhere, and it starts snowing more and more and more. And I call Stephen. <laughs> or I text Steven because yeah, I call like Edwin. three in the morning. Yeah, I try to call Edwin at three in the morning. And obviously, this is a very responsible man. He is not up at three <laughs> o'clock in the morning. And I, I don't know. He, he, Edwin you would, like, stays yeah. up all night randomly. I wouldn't answer so. my phone in the middle of the day either, though. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, he's a hard man to get a hold of. Good luck calling me. So you know, I, I try to get a hold of Ed. Can't get a hold of Ed. I contact Steven because he usually contacts me back really quick and he contacts me right away and i like started freaking out a little bit i was in this weird town and i was so cold i was wearing my motorcycle suit um, but that's not made for no. driving in the snow it's actually worse because the water like went inside the suit and just like <laughs> didn't leave me alone it was just like in there like puddled up and it was starting to like get frozen inside there and I was slipping all over the road and I like barely had any service and my phone was at 14%. So I'm like talking to Steven and I'm like, wow, I'm freezing, man. And I don't know where I am and I think I'm going to die. And I was getting kind of freaked out. And he's like, well, there's a casino like up a ways, a little way. And so I just got back on the bike, even though I didn't want to drove out of this little town into what seemed like the middle of nowhere. It was like a dark field, just snowing. I couldn't see anything. It was like going in my visor. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, in the distance, I see this little light like shimmering, like, sure. And I'm like, oh, that's the casino, man. I'm almost there. And I get there. It's this bar in the middle of nowhere with like a couple of cars outside. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's warm in there because I saw some smoke coming up. There was a little, like, wood stove in there. And I walk in, and this guy turns around, and he's like, holy devil, man, what the heck? And he pulls out a gun and, and points it right at me, and he's like, never, ever walk into a place like this dressed in that kind of gear. And I'm just like very confused at this point because I'm <laughs> sleep deprived and I've been in the snow and it was like really weird little shack. I didn't even know if it was like a house or a bar. And um, so, yeah, after that, I take off my helmet and we're all cool. It turns out I walked into a veteran meeting like from like oh, an old like shoot. an old war. I don't know what war, but they were like worried that I was coming to like take them out or something so they're like super <laughs> in a motorcycle helmet. yeah they're all like in a little like circle in this bar like drinking coffee and stuff and like it freaked him out which i kind of understand now but with no context you're like why is this man normally you would out? expect to be able to walk into a bar with a yeah. helmet on yeah like, getting off a bike and be yeah. fine that's you think that's pretty like, standard <laughs> there was no open sign or anything i definitely walked into a place that i wasn't supposed to walk into but it ended up being like a veteran meeting <laughs> but you're freezing to death i was freezing to death so they let me sit next to the little wood stove that nice lady behind the counter got me some coffee <laughs> it was great and then after that i set off got to the casino and right before i pulled in i slipped to that motorcycle off the road going like 10 miles an hour i just like 
tried to hit the brakes. They didn't work. And I just slid off the road into this little like ravine area and had to like craft it out before I could go to the casino to go to sleep. And it's like three or four. It's probably like four in the morning at this point. I'm freezing. I just want to go to bed. And the bike is like this heavy motorcycle with bald tires and no brakes, just idling in this ditch. Now I'm just like, Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> Hearing this full story, like I've heard all the bits and pieces, but hearing it all chronologically, it just blows my mind that anyone thought that was an idea. That was <laughs> it good. was just Will. Steven yeah. and I both tried to talk him out of it. We're like, oh, it's not worth driving back in the storm. We'll just do it next week. Yeah. Then Will's like, no, I have to do it. Like yeah. when he sets his mind, he really does get in this like game zone. And then after that, he drives it up here in the morning after he stays at the casino and then I meet him here, we start kind of filming, tearing down the bike. And I'm like, dude, let's do the 24 hour challenge a different day. Like you were up all night, three nights in a row, and then did that all night in the cold. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's just, you know, start the clock <laughs> a different day. Like let's sleep today, you know, no worries. And then we'll go. And he's like, no man, 24 hours. I have to do it. And that's what started the challenge ever since. then, we've been talking about challenges like every day, 24 but hour challenge, there was a thrill in the 24 hour challenge man. that hit different. Yeah. Will's really good at telling stories, uh, in different ways to different people because like Will's version, like all the facts are more or less the same, but like, I got the impression that will like, it was only like, I don't know, a vague percentage, his idea. You know, yeah. like, it wasn't like he was the only <laughs> one saying, we have to do this. He's like, not like, it, like, it sounded like much more of a group decision at every point. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. I will <laughs> confess that I really wanted to ride a motorcycle. So I did craft my way into a situation where I had to drive it through a storm like three hours back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh well, well. Yeah. Anyway. That's the 24 hour That's the lore of the 24 hour Yeah, hours and that's challenge. the engine that is now in the double, the double go kart. And that, that also, that machine came to be known as just the shaft. Yeah. It was yeah. such a pile of crap. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah. It looked kind of interesting and it made really good noises. It was, it was so, and it was hours. so dangerous too yes. because I put so, the throttle like in the wrong spot and made it out yeah. of like a brake or yeah. something. Yeah. Left foot throttle made out of a brake. Yeah. Instead of just using the throttle that yeah. was on the handlebars. It was really bad. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I think about that at night. I'm like, why did I put Dude, the this sleep, sleep deprivation, deprivation man. got That's crazy, <laughs> man. Did. That was a good video, though. That's the, probably... The of the stories, though, don't ever let Will build stuff when he's sleep deprived. Yeah. Like, challenges are great, but, like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nobody should build stuff sleep deprived, to be honest. We could have thought it very out. very interesting <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I do think everyone's got to go check out the 24 Challenge video because yeah. that is, like one of our better videos with the least amount of views. Mm. Like That's a like, lot of times, if we make a banger, like what was a recent banger, the double cart, like mm. it's all in one video. It's yep. really entertaining. A bunch of adventure stuff happens. Yeah. And that one, you know, got almost a million views. It's a now. one and done video where you have the adventure yeah. and the build. And there's not like, we put extra love into those. Yeah. And the, the 24 hour challenge is an example of one that deserves more views. Also the first limo video Mm -hmm. The first limo video at least has like close to a million. It's like yeah. seven or eight hundred thousand. So that's good. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, the uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm <laughs> shrinking. My huh? chair went down. All right. So what happened this weekend then? Yeah. So what's this? What's the story you were okay. whispering I about? I figured I wasn't going to tell you guys at all. Uh, and I was just going to let you guys figure it out uh, throughout time. Is this a lose your mustache situation? No, <laughs> there's okay. not much there right now. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Um, but I figure I'll let you guys take some guesses really quick and say, well, I don't have any do context. You? you were just whispering. Yeah. I don't have any, I got something. Yeah. That's all your context. And I mean, you already that, got the R1, so uh -huh. I'm going to guess uh -huh. it's, it's not a motorcycle uh -huh. like that because he said that he needs to, if it keeps snowing, he can use it tonight. I can use it to its full potential. Did you get a snowmobile or a snow bike? No, no, I no. bet he got like some kind of rally car. What? Did you get another Subaru, Will? You'd be I correct. Bet he got we have a lucky winner. <laughs> what, what, how many did you already have, Will? I already, I sold them. 
all. And I made the one Subaru contract with my girlfriend. Now I have two, but the silver one will be going up for sale pretty soon here. It's still not done, right? Yeah. So it's getting a new engine in it. And okay. then so you're just going to, you sale. were going to wow. keep that one. Yeah. But now so you got it. something better than the this, dream car you were yeah. building. Well, the thing that was so cool about the silver car is it was all the things from my yellow car, which was my dream project that I cut up a little too much and I decided wasn't my dream project anymore. So, so you just took all the internals from that. And yeah, you were putting so it, it was a kind WRX. of special, but it wasn't like special because yeah. I don't... It was just a random... It was just a random WRX, WRX. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. With all the stuff from the yellow car in it. So um, did you buy a 2.5 RS? Yes. Coupe, STI, 400 horsepower, with all the 22B stuff on it. So it's actually, it, it, STI swapped? Yeah. Yeah. With, yep. all, the, with all the wide body stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, not the wide body stuff, but like. Well, you said the 22B stuff. That's yeah. wide body. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little bit misleading. It has like. Well, like the, all the mechanical. The guy who stuff, built or? it, this is a very good build. It's a really like quality project. And that's why I bought it. Because it, I could tell when I looked at the car that it had all the Japanese stuff on it and it was like an eye wire harness. The guy didn't just hot glue the car together like I would. <laughs> so I, when I saw it, I was like, I have to have that car because it's a coupe and uh, it's an STI and I, that's what my yellow car was. Um, but when I say 22B stuff, I mean like the dash from a 22B, like the gauge cluster, all that stuff. Gotcha, like all the interior the stuff. Special stuff. Okay. It has the... So it's like what your yellow car would have been if you finished it. Yeah, it's what I wanted my car to be. It has the DCCD and the uh, intercooler sprayer and stuff. A rear window wiper from Japan. You can only get them in Japan. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> it has, a bunch of stuff that no people who aren't really into Subaru have no idea what you're talking <laughs> about. Mind you, this is a 96. When you park it, the mirrors fold in. Only Japanese has that. So and um, yours cool. specifically how, does. Do we, do do we want to know how much money you paid for this car? You do because it's a fabulous deal. Oh, all right. But I'll start my story off before I tell you. The okay, part. okay. Let's hear the whole story. So I've been crafting. I've been talking to my girlfriend a lot, and I've been saying, "Hey, I don't think this is the car that I want for my one Subaru deal. I want something the different." Silver car, right? Yeah, yeah okay. I just don't want it, and I want to switch. I want to make a little trade and get it out of here. And so I still agree to the one Subaru deal. I have two right now, but you know, that's just an overlap in time. Yeah. 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 So I've been looking at them and I found a really good deal on a JDM hatchback WRX that I was talking about on the last podcast. And we were trying to figure out if it was responsible enough for me to get one or not. Mm -hmm. But that deal ended up falling through because someone decided to outbid me by $3,000. That's a lot of outbidding. Yeah, for a car that doesn't work. That had blown head gaskets. What? Yeah. Yeah, there, that was a mustache losing situation yeah. to start. With. I know. I wasn't gonna <laughs> I was gonna buy it and then like hand build the head gaskets back together, but I just decided probably not the best yeah. thing to do. I want to get a running car. So I found this car that had actually been up for quite some time, but I think it got hidden by some like algorithms or something, because no one was biting at it. Yeah, sometimes when you list things like if you don't put, like, I don't know. I've just seen something. If you don't put in the right name that will show up in a search, like mm-hmm. sometimes it just, it just yeah, yeah, it was labeled wrong. It wasn't labeled as a coupe. Right. And so people are looking for those cars. They're not looking for the four door version of this. So yeah, it just didn't get seen. And I found a really good deal already. It was 10 grand. He wanted 10 grand for this car. Which four hundred horsepower all wheel drive yeah. STI swap. I mean, where are you getting anything? For yeah, ten gr- pretty less good than that. deal. Okay, so I find it and I talk to my buddy Davy and I'm like, "Hey, let's take your Insight down to Seattle. I want to try to drive this car anyway, the Insight, so it gives us an opportunity to drive this car to Seattle, so I can test it out. That car gets seventy five miles to the gallon. My grandmother, what? My grandmother had one of those a red Honda Insight. They're you know what's funny? Sick. When I was in Texas last week. We went we, we went up to Santa Fe for uh, for the weekend, just, mm-hmm. you know, for something different to do. And I'm pretty sh- sure I saw her old Insight. Because, I mean, how many really? Insights are actually on the road? I, <laughs> they said many, there's right? 5,000. They have a calculator yeah, left, and it's like right? 5,000. <laughs> and in Santa Fe, New Mexico, 
It what was a bright red insight? Sure. And I'm, it, it was probably my grandmother. This is the same grandmother that had the van. Anyway, carry ha, have on. Have you with seen your story. an insight? No idea. They're, They're manual, like early two thousands cars that look like jelly beans. They have like the the rear wheels are half covered by the body. Oh yeah, and, I know what you're talking were, about. Like, they were a Prius, but like ten years before the Prius, and like look way newer. Wow, like Davy has one of those, and they were designed in the same place that the first NSX was designed in aluminum frame. Like they're like really they were well way made. ahead of their wow, time. Wow, yeah. that's cool. And they're Super hybrid cool. and all that. Obviously. Yeah, so we got to learn how that all works, and I got to drive that car a little bit down there, and the whole idea was to just go down there on the weekend, get this car and drive it back. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's a runner runner. Yeah. It like, it's like built. Well, like, wow. I don't know. You guys have seen the cars I drive. Yeah, they're the worst super <laughs> yeah. known to man. This thing, this thing's a little, like it's got some scratches and dings and the paint's not super great, but like the quality of build is insane because this guy was the guy who originally made it was stationed in Japan Mm. and so he just got to see like how they were built and like he was like really into subarus in japan so he just had like all these special parts delivered back when he got back to the states and built it into a u.s car mm. so he just put all that stuff on there so anyway we go to check out the car and well we got some donuts and stuff first hung out in seattle a little bit went to check out the car and usually it's like some kid that's selling you a shafty Subaru. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm you mean, used to that. You mean like you, Will? No. That's, you. I, I'm you a the, good you salesman. You fit the description. <laughs> yeah. You're a swindler. Yeah. You are the weird kid selling people shafty <laughs> Subarus. You are the main character in that story. No. That's not uh, It is true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't fight that. But anyway, <laughs> we show up and this guy is like super professional and the car looks way better than it did in photos. And I'm like, awesome, sweet. Let's take it for a test drive and see if it works. And so he's like, well, let me drive it for you first so that I can show you all the special things. And we're driving down in a 25 mile per hour zone. <laughs> and this man is casually talking to us and he's like, yeah. I uh, work in law enforcement and I'm like, nice. Like, what do you do? And he's like, well, I'm part of like the gang management force in Seattle. What? And he's like, it's a really fun job. And like, it pays for all my Subarus. And he's like, just talking to us like calm and collected and driving it really respectfully. And all of a sudden we pull out of the Lowe's parking lot we're in. And this man roasts. All four tires at once. I've never been in a car that does that all wheel drive roasting all four tires. It's a little rainy. So like yeah, easier yeah. to do, but he's roasting all four tires. He pulls out like three lanes into this like road. That is a 25 mile per hour zone is zipping through traffic at like a hundred miles an hour. And Davy and I are both in there like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And this guy is yeah. in law enforcement. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and we're just like smiling ear to ear. Like, how do you say that? Ear to ear? Yeah. Yeah. Grinning, we're, grinning ear to ear. It is put a smile on my face immediately. So much so that when we got back, I didn't even check the oil, which I should have. I checked it when we were at a gas station. It was fine. Uh -huh. But, um. Yeah, it was a done deal from there because that man <laughs> was roasting tires, blasting through traffic, like took us so on the ride of our life. did you pay the full life. price, the full 10 grand asking price? No. I was waiting for this part of the story. Let's take bargaining guesses of how much I paid for this Ugh. car. Well, let's let you finish the story and then we'll guess. <laughs> okay. I'm just excited to tell you how much I got the car for, but yeah, I'll, <laughs> we'll wait. So anyway, yeah, we... I'll show you, the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. So... We, we do the deal and we go back to his house to sign paperwork and he's got this sick exact wagon that I was going to buy before I left for Seattle, but it's so much cleaner than that one and it was super premium and he has like stacks of JDM stuff all over the place and his police car's right out front because I didn't believe him after that. I was like, this man is not a police officer if he's doing that. But yeah, his police car's stacked out front and... Uh, <laughs> With this Stacked. awesome, with all these awesome JDM parts and this awesome Subaru, 
And it was just the best buying experience I've ever had in my entire life. Like this guy knew what he was talking about. He knew the parts that he had on there. He knew the value of the car. And like, there's something to be said if this man is just ripping on this car that hard. You don't do that to a yeah. Subaru unless you know something's <laughs> built different in there. Yeah, he knows that it's going to last. When I take people drive. on test drives, I'm like, all right, we're going to hit 20. Everyone hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this man was roasting. So, yeah, we get the car. We start heading back. And on the way back, it says, like, WRX on the back of it. And it has, like, all the old 90s, like, WRX yeah. stickers all over it. And so, like, all these sad boys want to race me. <laughs> That car put three car lengths on a 2019 STI that was making stew-stew noises at me. (laughs) It put, like, miles on a Focus ST with, like, a big wing and stuff and making (laughs) stew-stew noises. And, uh, yeah, it just it beat every car that I raced. And I raced very responsibly, too. We'd (laughs) slow down and then go, shoo! And you just hook up. It is just... It is incredible. I love it. And I'm going to bring it here one day. But uh-huh. it runs and drives, but... One but, day. But, well, you keep saying but. Yeah. What's, the, what's the but here? Well, it runs and drives, Where's but the poop, like, Robin? I just... There is no poop. I just... It's so, like, premium, and I just don't want to drive it at all. I'm, like, worried about it. Oh, well, especially so in the snow. I mean, with the... With the uh, all the salt and or yeah, not salt, but the all, thing but that I here. like about it is it's not premium on the outside. It just like just looks like this little weird coupe. It's that, a sleeper. It's a sleeper. Yeah, it doesn't have a big wing. It has like a medium wing. Well, yeah, I mean back in the nineties they weren't making the gigantic. Yeah, wings. it's just <laughs> it has a hood scoop and stuff, but it just it has some scratches on it. The paint's not good at all. But like nice. the build quality is. Just nice. It's not <laughs> sad boy. It's really the best Subaru I've ever seen in my life. Nice. But, um, and it's yours. Yeah, it's mine. And I think it got Katie into Subarus, which is awesome. Really? I did one poll and she's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> it is just the funnest thing ever because it's nice. enough horsepower to be fun, but like still controllable to a certain point. And it sounds like a tractor inside of it because it has like straight cut gears. Like oh, the gears yeah, are that, like, it, yeah, it's like, yeah. sounds like nice. a rally car. Yeah, so it's really cool. I, I can't wait to show you guys. Nice. I think it will be really cool. So my guess was 7,000. 7,000. <laughs> well, first I want to know, like, how and why did you try to talk him down? Like, I, <laughs> He's it's a something I, like, I get that I get, I get like showing up to a vehicle and like, you don't want to pay full price mm-hmm. and like, you can find things that are wrong with it and you're like, okay, like these things are wrong. Like, I don't know. You know, it's, you know, you're talking down yeah. when you absolutely fall in love with a car immediately and it's better than you expected. Mm-hmm. How do you talk someone down from that? Like, <laughs> and why? <laughs> well, I talked to him, super owner to super owner. Uh, I used a different method here. Okay. He's like, he had it listed for a really long time. He wasn't really into it cause it wasn't, he didn't build it. He just bought it. Oh, okay. So he wasn't, it wasn't like his baby or anything. So I didn't feel like I was taking something from someone. That's fair. I mean, if he didn't build it, I was thinking yeah. that he built if it. If he had built it, I definitely would have just like been like, eh, it's whatever. We'll just do it. But um, yeah, it was just kind of sitting there not being used. So I was like, well, from one Subaru user to the next, like this car's going to be taken care of meticulously (laughs) well you don't even (laughs) meticulous is not shouldn't even be in your vocabulary (laughs) i'll taste the oil every once in a while at a (laughs) gas station that's the first thing i did to uh to davy's surprise he was like you're tasting the oil man what are you doing man but all uh, right so all right now i'll take my guess before you before you tell us so it was listed for 10 Mm -hmm. it sounds like it was worth 10 it was, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to the right person. Mm, I'm going to guess six. How did you know <laughs> exactly the number I chose? <laughs> yeah. You got it for six? I got it for yeah. six. So I got a 600 yeah. horsepower coupe. Wait, you said 400 horsepower before. Or 400 horsepower, you said six. So I was thinking about <laughs> I was yeah. like, your story's changing, no, man. No, 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 These no. aren't real yeah. numbers. So it's a 400 horsepower uh, coupe which I really wanted the coupe. Nice. It's cool. It's built well. It's going to last a long time. Did you uh, send a picture to Andrew yet? 
I haven't yet. I, that, that's what I should have done. I yeah. should have sent it to him. He would have Andrew really is a big fan of Impreza's. Yeah. So you got yourself a rally car. I got myself a proper rally car. It's like it is. Are you exactly gonna Are you gonna put rally. rally suspension on it or keep it the way it is? I want to put rally suspension. It came with uh, something that I've never seen before. It's JDM, so you know, <laughs> uh, it's Subaru coilovers from Subaru. So like they're well, they're like adjustable BC coilovers. From Subaru. That's interesting. Because, I mean, the, the, the style of shock on a Subaru stock is, is coil a coilover. Over. Yeah. But they're like a wire. So I said it wrong. But like a... I was just clarifying. Yeah. Like, I know what you mean. I was just... Like, yeah. Think of like the, Sad Boy suspension, but it's from Subaru, Subaru factory, factory. And it's adjustable. It's pretty that's, sick. That is pretty cool. Nice. But it bounces like the BRZ. Right? Oh. You know, like, so they're, they're boom, JDM, but they're probably boom. worn out yeah. JDM with no yeah, valving they're left. Blown <laughs> out. They're terrible. But yeah. yeah. Nice. Yep. So that's what I was saying. I think I was very responsible. I didn't break any laws. I mean, you did race three people that you mentioned. So there's that. But there's that. But other than that, (laughs) I also got a hundred and thirty mile motorcycle ride in this weekend. So that's what I did this weekend. It was really nice. nice. Didn't break any rules. Very nice. Nice. Uh (laughs) (laughs) I don't believe you. One doesn't go on but, an R one without breaking any rules, man. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. though, this Subaru sounds more responsible than your other Subaru because your other one was just like yeah. a kind of random clapped out WRX. Yeah, it was just, then you were putting a ton uh, of power into it, and it was like, and it didn't yeah. have like the brakes or anything. Yeah, to right. It, it was so it was stock. Like, <laughs> this one sounds like it might even have an airbag or two left in her. <laughs> Yeah. They were not. It has the JDM steering wheel. They don't no have no airbags. Oh, airbags really? At all. No really? Airbags and nothing. But. It, does that have harnesses or just no? Nope. It's were the JDM safety seats. regulations just different in the United States yep. over that year? Yeah, Big probably. difference, really. So that's why everyone wants that kind of stuff. But it has like the door because it's wider for racing and stuff without yeah. the okay. Yep. So it's like it's just something like the more I evolve and the more I'm around <laughs> Ethan, the more I want something that like works really well and is like built really well built different built different so i think it's like a next step for me nice. because it's something that i still have a daily driver i'm not going to be da- like driving that car i mean it's the day. first car that you've owned that i mean i haven't seen it yet but mm-hmm. based on descriptions it's the first car you've ever owned that i s- would want to drive or ride in yeah <laughs> yeah it's something that i want you guys to drive because it's like it's raw and nice. it's real and it's just. Are you nice. going to set a lap time on the rally track with it when you get your rally suspension? Yes. I don't get how you can get it for that price. Even the 10, just knowing how much money and time you've spent on your other Subarus so far. Yeah. And that's the reason that I got it because a six speed costs 5,500 bucks. Just the trans. If yeah. You yeah. Buy it, like, so how is. So I just, it's crazy that someone who understood what he had was willing to let it go for that, I guess. He understood what he had. But I think the wife also had a one Subaru rule. Mm. Oh. Also, there's like, so you guys have seen Milo's car that I built the bumpers for yeah. here in town. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks really cool. Like it's a lifted Impreza. Yeah. It's nothing special like body wise, yeah. but it's very modified. He's it's put sick. a six cylinder, uh, whatever, three point or the three liter six cylinder Subaru engine mm-hmm. in it. And like, he's done a lot of work to that car. And I built the bumpers. And like, if if you were to like, pay someone just to build those bumpers. It would cost as much as he's trying to sell it for. And he keeps dropping the price and dropping the price because no one yeah. wants to buy it. Like there is a certain, I don't know. There are certain weird categories of car where like it's theoretically the thing that everybody wants, but like, but they don't, but they don't aren't willing to pay it's the price. It's the thing all the 14 year old high school boys want that don't have money. That don't have And their the parents won't buy it for them. And yeah. they don't actually have money. <laughs> so I think that's the thing. Also, I was telling you in the last podcast, like, the car market right now for especially those cars, like Milo's cars. There's a whole bunch of six cylinder swap Subarus out there. Whole bunch of turbocharged Subarus. Yeah, people are afraid of swapped and modified cars for sure. So like, whereas like WRXs like aren't seen the same way because it's just like, it's already turboed. It's already, even though it's been touched many times. When they're touched. (laughs) Yeah, that's bad. Like, but it's not the same as an engine swapped car that in terms of people being like afraid of it. So maybe there's that too. Yeah. I don't know. But but anyway. yours, how built is the engine to get 400? Or is that like it's a super, super just- built? But the thing that's cool is it's super built and it's not tuned to a certain point. It only hits like 
13 pounds of boost or something. It's high compression. It's like high he compression, did compression low build, boost. Yeah. low yeah. boost. So That's cool. it has a tiny turbo. It hits boost like instantly in every single gear. Is it a 2.5? Uh, it's, yeah, it's a 257 with two O heads on it and then a JDM intake on it. Mm. So, and then these weird fuel injectors I've never seen. And, uh, it has a three disc clutch in it that has built my leg differently. Oh, dude, racing clutches <laughs> are terrible. Yeah. It is like very intense to drive, but it's exactly what I wanted. And I, nice. yeah, I think Ethan is exactly right. Modified cars, when they're engine swap, people just don't want them because... I think modified cars in general, you just never get you even never anything get close back. to what you put no. into it. No. Like, you, to build that car, you would have spent, like, easily over 20 grand. Right. Mm. In just random things, like wiring harness, 1200 bucks, like ECU. Yeah. Turbo. Turbo. Couple grand, like, couple whatever. Grand. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then you go quick. to sell it, and people are like... Eh, it's just a little car with an engine in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 6,000 bucks. And so I think that's how you get something like that. But nice. that's what I was whispering to, to Stephen about. Nice. nice. Very nice. Mm-hmm. I've just really, it itches something in me that the Honda Civic does not. Like <laughs> Honda Civic should not do anything <laughs> for you. <laughs> the Honda Civic has really been griping me out lately. It lost its VTEC and it only goes to 4,000 RPM and hits only 80 miles an hour. <laughs> so well, that's over all of the speed limits in this part of. The well, world, yes, so. but every day on my way to work, all I have to do is slam my foot all the way to the ground in and fifth just keep gear, going and built-in cruise goes, control. Yeah, it just goes 80 <laughs> miles an hour, and I cannot go any faster. It is horrible, and also burns like an insane amount of oil. It was like Ethan walked past it, and he's like, "Your car smells like oil." It, it does. It does oh no! Like oil, yeah. It does. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> That's pretty craft. Might also sa- it might also smell like oil because I dropped like multiple gallons of oil in that. <laughs> yeah, 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 that it smells true like too. burning oil. Yeah, Gosh, yeah, like just like oil. oil. True. Um, yeah. I'm getting responsible too. I you do. As I'm retiring the Tesla man as a daily oh, driver. Yeah. yeah, I need a truck. I'm just a guy who needs a truck. Yeah. What can I say? So I got the smallest, cheapest truck that's the closest thing to a Chang Lee money can buy. I got a chance to ride in it. What were we going to do? Just get lunch or yeah. something? Yeah, we went to go get lunch. Ethan, his truck is a Chang Lee in the interior. <laughs> it really is. It really it's is. So, <laughs> it's so plasticky. It's so nice. I love it. Yeah. Oh, my the gosh. screen is super small. I really don't like the trend of like, the biggest screen possible. No, in the I'm, truck. I'm with you on that. My t- my Tundra has like a I don't know 14 inch screen, yeah. and I, it doesn't like specifically bother me because I just tune it out. Mm-hmm. But I, why? What do you need a 14 inch screen for in, in a, a truck? truck? Yeah, like, like I get like it's like okay, you got to entertain your kids in a suburban, but, but like you can't even watch stuff on it. Yeah, you can't do true. that unless you hack it. Yeah, like it just for navigation, you need a screen like mm. not that big. That's what I like about yeah. the Maverick. Like all the buttons is a real button mm. and the screen just plays music like it should be like and there's a manual button for turning down the brightness of the screen so i can just turn mm. it off to the point i That's think there's probably a way to needs. turn it off entirely but i like just because it's hard to see with this big the screen, screen yeah and like coming from the tesla is really nice because the tesla like oh it's like i want to turn up my speed of my heat a little bit you know the it's fan the speed screen. it's the you worst to thing ever touch the yeah. screen touch it it sucks so bad so i was like just turning a real knob to turn nice. up my heat yep. and i was like nice <coughs> yeah but i got 26 miles of the gallon nice driving it's an back all home. wheel yeah. drive truck did you, you know, know what else is even? crazy what? my van gets 26 miles to the gallon and it's a really huh? Granted, it's diesel so it's not a fair comparison <laughs> that's <but>. crazy <laughs> yeah. i didn't know it yeah. was that good yeah. Yeah. well that's right crazy. now the speedometer is broken yeah. so i don't actually know but that's what i i did record yeah. a few tanks at 26 wow so anyway nice. yeah it's funny just the cycle of grind hard vehicles like yep. when we sold the ranger it was six by six ranger fallen to pieces kind of and then in like Half a day, we made it super nice. Yeah. And then sold it. And then the same thing's going to happen with the Tesla. Like, we're putting real headlights on it that are actually, like, dot approved for the yep. first time yep. with our friend Lucas at SMS. Yep. And then we're doing, like, replacing, like, the steering and making it all nice. I already took it to Tesla. got the windshield replaced. Like We might have to get the rest of the glass replaced before we try to sell it. It's all pretty <laughs> jank. Yeah. yeah. It's all broken. But it's just so, yeah. like, it is the cycle, and it does make sense to do things that way because 
if we make it all really nice and then we're not going to want to rally it through yeah, the no, woods we for the video. It. it would be no point for yeah. just the video. And visually, it looks the same on camera. Exactly. Yeah. It, yeah it, be, so. it, it, and if anything, it's funnier and more entertaining if it's <laughs> when falling apart. When all the windows are broken. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's more inter- like every time I steer it and it's like, <laughs> like that's hilarious for the on yeah. camera, you know, yep. but yeah, normal truck. Cause there's been a lot of like deals that like we haven't gone and picked up and like your trucks being used and whatever. Well, now and my like, truck's just at the body shop for a week. <laughs> yeah. Which is especially annoying. You just got <laughs> new gigantic Fox shocks just showed up today and I can't put them on for a week because <laughs> yeah. I backed into a teeny tiny tree. That is a bummer. <laughs> that would be so. so aggravating. You have some of the best suspension sitting here. And I can't <laughs> put it on the truck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, We've all you know. been making, making big responsibility moves in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I don't know if the res- the suspension decision so far up to this point has been not a responsible decision because yeah. I spent a lot of money on King Shocks for my truck yeah. uh, because I always wanted King Shocks. I thought they were cool, and it turns out that those shocks on that truck really, really bad. Yeah. So I spent a ton of money to make it <laughs> way, way worse than it was. That is a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a brand new truck. It's not like oh, I need yeah, to replace my right. shocks anyways. Might as well get something high yeah. end. It but. only had. 24,000 miles on it. So the shocks weren't totally worn out. I was just like, you know, I can, yeah. I can do this. I want to, well, well, I mean, everybody knows I have a suspension fetish basically. So <laughs> I, just, I was obsessed with suspension. I was like, yeah, but, let's just get yeah, the best one. Best ones. But then Fox came out with the ones that they just sent us that are actually better than the Kings, but they came out with them like a week after I bought the oh, <laughs> ones that I bought. Man. I That's like, like our drone. Yeah. Things are just coming out so fast right now. It's yep. like you get the best drone and then two months later, the better drone is out. Yep. And it's like, well, you're kind of stuck with the old one until you shrek it into a tree, which miraculously this is the only drone I haven't done that to. <laughs> and like, since we started grind hard or even before that, but yep. don't say that tomorrow you'll like fly it up in the sky and like hit something like, uh, a roof. but then we have I mean, the refresh the program. Lake. Yeah, I do think so. This drone next tree or power line or whatever I hit with this thing and we get the brand new one for the replacement policy, I'll sell that one, and then I'm going to buy the three lens one. My Mm. friend got it. It is amazing. The telephoto is, like, so sick. We could get shots, like, fly a 1,000 feet away and get, like, a close-up of, like, a build ripping out the driveway or something. Like, it's really cool. cool. The telephoto would be really nice. The telephoto would be awesome. There's just something about the the, the, the compression that... Yeah. Especially on do. a drone. Yeah. It's like, well, because the drone, you can't get close to stuff most of the time. I mean, yeah. like the FPV one, you can, but that one isn't like uh-huh. smooth cinematic stuff. Yeah. Like you have to be farther away or you're yeah. going to run into crap. So. But you like buy a drone thinking, I'm going to get this sweet aerial shot like in the movies when really every shot from the movies is not a wide. It's no, it's the, it's shot. like a cinema camera yeah. with a super, with a exactly. you know, zoom lens on so. it. Exactly. That's the plan. The next responsible decision I'll make is crashing my drone so I can get the new one. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. That's a swindle move right there. <laughs> Did you have a wise words with Will queued up for today, Will? Don't use tennis shoes in the mud. <laughs> That's a good one. I th- also, I thought the whole point of Wide's words with Will is that it was spur of the moment, not cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm feeling it today. I brought my tennis <laughs> shoes and I walked in the mud a little bit. <laughs> Oh, boots. boots. I have, and the weird thing is my boots are like right there too. Yeah, yeah so along <laughs> you with You know what else is funny is we have another boot sponsorship coming up and all you have to do is respond to a text and you get another set you of boots. You get a brand boots. new pair of these. Really? Yeah. Where? It's the group chat. Oh. Just respond. The one There's with a them. whole list and yeah. you just have to pick uh, one. Oh, okay. Em called Your me size? today and she was like, can you make Will respond to the group <laughs> chat? I was like, some things aren't possible on this <laughs> earth. You know, but I think this is a perfect time for another extremely funny story regarding boots and Will. Oh, what'd you do? Will wears a size nine boot. <laughs> I wear a size 11 boot. Admittedly, we have the same brand of boots, uh, but mine, they, they tend to be a different color and shape due to the way that Will wears his boots. He's a menace. It has happened no less than three times that Will has gone home wearing my <laughs> boots. Like, I have numerous pairs of boots, and so, like, I'm not always wearing the same pair. So, Will goes into the house, takes his boots off, and then when he leaves, he puts on size 11s and does not <laughs> notice all the way home. He doesn't notice. The first time he did it, I was like, Will, 
you wore my boots. There's two pairs of yours and there's only one of mine. He's like, no, that's not possible. I could not have done that. And I was like, no, I promise you, you did this. He's like, no way. And then he went home and he's like, oh, yeah, you were right. I took your boots. And then I did it two more times. Yeah, <laughs> Three times. He's done it to me too. Like we're walking around well, the garage. Well, at least only like half a size different. Yeah, but they're still completely different color and everything. Uh, that's true. And I was like, well, you're wearing my boots, man. And he looked down and he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> The ultimate swindler is just swindling everybody's boots. Yep. Yep. That's the boot swindler. And this is the Sent and Bent podcast. Thanks for watching. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts.